Gary was a man who thought he could do crypto cheering at the SEC. Gary fooled us all with thought he was a hero teaching blockchain at MIT. We'll get back, log it back, get back and leave crypto alone. Get back, log it back, get back and leave crypto alone. Get back, Gary.
Charts of the Road Dog. My name is Lane. I am the Village Idiot on patrol tonight as we're checking out this market, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. It's a Friday. We're supposed to pump like the madman. Who told you that? Who told you that? Look at this market, man. On the daily. Look at the hourly. Gotten a little something there, but the daily man is rocked in red. It's even sadder when you go to the weekly and say, man, we're still rocked in red. Oh, God, don't go to the monthly. Please don't. Oh, there's a little bit of green there, but it's still a lot of red. Wow. It almost fills. I don't know. Oh, Jesus. Like a crash. <laughs> but it's really not. If you look at it, we're just in this symmetrical triangle. The pattern I call the most reliable unreliable freaking pattern out there never trust a symmetrical triangle it's what i've been saying for years it's what i say every time i see one and every time it freaking plays out why what do they love to do the symmetrical triangle loves to break out to the upside they get the, oh yes it's a continuation pattern we're going to the moon baby because that is a flag pole right there that's going to take us up to just the highs those are going to make us all cry and we're all going to have lambos and live in heaven and we're all going to be crazy rich when bitcoin reaches eighty six thousand dollars well that's what you typically get when it starts forming out but reality gives you a much different different picture when it's involved with a symmetrical triangle because they do something that i call the rabbit run they break up to the upside oh yeah yeah oh hold on baby roller coaster ride just getting started down this side now wait and they're saying oh it's a reversal no <laughs> strap in Make sure your seatbelt is secure. Put the bar over you. Get your barf bag ready because they just like to do crazy stuff. 
We don't know what they're going to do. A lot of times it ends up being a range. Sometimes it might be a dump to the downside. You can't trust them. You don't know. Is that guy just sitting there standing there in the corner? I don't know. He's buttering his bread with a hunting knife, and you don't know, and he's staring at you. I don't know. What the hell is this guy going to do? So that's my take on it. <laughs> There's nothing new if you've been watching me that uh, I always tell you I don't trust him. But rather than try to do that, chart these little guys, and I said this from, from the beginning because I just don't like them. You take this little line that you started out with, bring it, bring it down here to an area. And we're going to track this as a channel because that's what we got. Now, being on the 12 hour here, I'm just going to bring the best little line. See some, you know, I know we got a little breakout. We're not, we're just following the major trend that we were on before. Carrying it down to, oh, candle bodies, maybe some wicks, finding some confluence there. A little bit of something here. It could probably be a little bit better. I did have it up higher. It's on a different time frame. See, time frame's kind of playing this too. Oh, we'll have to adjust this little line, okay? I'm just saying, but the biggest thing is keep that angle. This tells us where we could reasonably go, man, and that should be down at the bottom of this. 60,000? Good, good. We got a lot of stuff acting as support before we get there, so I'm not quite worried about it. Unless I know it's crazy, I know it's crazy. But for some reason, and I may be totally wrong in this, but I still see a good chance of something coming up to 78,000 and knocking on that door before we start doing all the stuff that we're expecting it to happen right now. I'm looking for maybe a, a, a one more little high up there before we start getting something. New. Now we've got to start thinking about, oh crap, now something's going to happen. And maybe I'm wrong on that. But that's just what I kind of pieced together when I start looking at the charts here. Because I'm not saying that we're in just beautiful territory this is this might just pass by within a day or two it may it might it's where indicators come in looking on the bigger time frames and here we're on the monthly here on the macd and she's just ready to rock and roll there's no sign of weakness there whatsoever this is our main time frame saying hey man the bigger thing yeah we're gonna be going up happening's coming up there's gonna be a short a, a supply shock on bitcoin probably built a little bit earlier now in this cycle because everything seems to be coming a little early so i'm kind of curious about that monthly not concerned two week mm, it's a little sign of weakness there but we can still we're still strong we're still strong so when we start coming to the weekly and the three day that we got a problem here on the weekly with the macd we can see the first signs of problems it's just getting tired but it's been tired over here we dip down a little bit did a little the little old duck lip thing that's this little guy so like they come in and look like they're going to cross the lines are going to cross, but they don't. And they bounce off each other. Those like little duck lips. It's very trendy. So I'm told. But I have to be cautious when I start seeing this on the weekly. Because I do pay a lot of attention to the MACD on the weekly. This one is what will help you avoid getting stuck at the top of the market. Or not calling the top. The MACD. Even though it's a little slow. When we're starting to see it do right here, this is a, that's what I'm looking for for our top signal. It's, it is showing something that's putting, uh, making my ears perk up. Because if we're in the full on bull market, I'm watching this MACD and I'm watching for this. When everybody's, uh, we're going to 250,000. Yeah, if I start seeing curves over here, I'm saying, mm, I don't know about that. I'm uh, starting to plan an exit. So MACD weekly is saying, you might want to start planning a contingency plan now if you don't already have one you should already have one for real but if you don't and you ever look on the weekly macd and you see this this is your sign mm, i need to, um i need to take a closer look and just in case things don't keep going to the moon that is exactly this take up snapshot picture this right here we'll see this again in about a year or something right or maybe a few times in between, but it's at this point, we're not making a decision yet, but it's saying, mm -hmm, it's time we had that talk, dog. The time we had that talk. Now we come down to like the five day, it, she's wanting to talk for real. Three day, she's been screaming in our ear. You just haven't been listening. Listen, man, I'm crossing bear slates. Something's going to happen here, you know, for a little while, at least. Just in one ear, out the other. What? No. No, no, we're going to 88,000. Look, here's a trend lines. Here's a major move. That's where I see us going. Now that you're gone and we've fallen out, I can't 
So when when I was, when I put all of this together and see that, just looking at that indicator, the MAGD, what we can discern from that, really, the monthly overall we're strong. Two week we're strong. Weekly, well, we need to start thinking about some things. This is signaling that, oh, I don't know, could be a next another next two weeks could be kind of you know kind of trying for us. Probably not the uh, the happy bags that we want to see, but not necessarily that we're going to zero that it's all over just yet so if anything MACD is telling us well we got a little pullback season here and I wouldn't be too alarmed we saw this a few weeks ago back over here remember this yeah well, what, that's a fancy little bit of manipulation there grayscale selling out on a Friday so that BlackRock can accumulate it then whales can accumulate it over the weekend and it drove prices back up might we see something like that again maybe they do like to try those little tricky things. Do remember that China, Hong Kong has an ETF coming out very soon. And um, they've got to buy a crap load of Bitcoin. Do you think they want to pay the high prices? Nah, let's call up the banker boys. Doesn't matter what nationality you are. Doesn't matter what political affiliation that you are. Well, all that matters is numbers, baby. Banker to banker, hey, give me a favor. Ah, I got you, brother. We're not prices down for you this weekend. You get good deal. You do the same for us, too, okay? Okay. Yeah, we have a team. Bitcoin getting a little scared here on the weekend. But then again, for me to see someone call for a very bullish Friday, we're, we're, we're not there yet. You gotta have retail full on board for those bullish Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Now we were monitoring Bitcoin price to see if retail is here. It's trickling in, but right now it's still a bunch of big players and whale games that we're seeing right now. So altcoins have taken a hit today. Total three took that nose dive. Oh man, I've not even looked at you. She did. Were there any clues? Were there possibly any clues on total three that could have told us about this big ass dump yeah there were i've been talking about them for a while it's this trend line here that says 3.618 that's like a reversal that's a toppy toppy top area now do you believe me i'm well i had to prove it to myself too let's take a look at total three because this is your altcoins my altcoins all of our backs together and we need to kind of be in a in on this right figure this little guy out right because she did something. She broke a trend line. Man. And that is so sad. That is so sad. Well, you sort of seen it. A shoulder, head and shoulder. Really? What did you do to prepare for it? <laughs> So there's good indications. There are. The signs are always here in the charts if we just pay attention to them. I'm not trying to be that guy that said we knew what was going to happen because it didn't. No, but the signs were up here to be. Take a little warning. 618 retracement area. 813,000. We didn't even made it up there. I was looking for it. Hopefully we could. Doesn't mean we have to. But, you know, we draw a trend line here as best as we can. Draw several of them to kind of monitor things. We lost this one and wanted to kind of retest that. And then, then we lost this one. And gosh darn it, the only one we got left is way down here at 580 or 560, just depending on wherever the line's up on this line. Let's call it $568 billion. Good visit that. Don't have to. There is some support on the long, along the way. These areas of horizontal support that we have here. Of course, that's lower than that. So that doesn't help us out. We got this wick area that we wick down to here. That might be something that's coming in right at it. Another little wick area right over here. We've not quite hit 200 movement average. That's what I'm kind of getting to, fellas. That 200 movement average here on the 12 hour, bigger time frames. Looking at the 200 and the 100 movement average for possible areas of support. Come to the eight hour. We're at one. It may stick. It may not. But definitely big old sell off for what reason? Hmm. Fears of war? Maybe. 
we're getting to a place in these economies where there's not much that can get us out of these economic situations brought to you by the greed and stupidity of our political leaders sadly forces us in situations where um, it takes dire dire tactics to correct something like that unfortunately lots of governments do like to turn to war in times like that because it does boost the economy i hate to see that i think it should really say something about who we put in office and the situations that they get us in down the road that put us in these situations that are robbing the future not only from us but from our kids and grandkids yeah that's the things that we really need to be concerned about but lucky luckily the audience here those of you in crypto yeah, you kind of are privy to that, and you're already onto a better way, especially Bitcoin, as a hedge against that, a way, a saving grace against that, because God said, let there be Bitcoin, and it was good. And it's here for us, the people's money. Not the government's money, the people's money. I digress. Let's get into some altcoin news. Oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> Unless you're just looking for bargains and altcoins, there's not much to talk about, but we'll get into that. Let's see what is going on with our altcoins. Any new developments? Let's check it out. Gosh darn it, so close. One of these days I'll nail it. What happened in crypto in the last 12 hours, according to Layer GG over on Twitter X, the Israel-Iran conflict is escalating, raising the possibility of war. As a result, Israel-related projects have remained relatively flat. Namely, one that they're mentioning is orbs. Hong Kong regulators could approve spot ETFs based on Bitcoin and Ether as early as when? Monday. If only they could get it at a cheaper price before then. Wouldn't that be awesome? BNB Binance announces launch of the Omni launch pool starting April 13th. Carry Protocol announces a merger with SLG Games. SLG to boost their gaming infrastructure. The merger vote is scheduled for April 14th. Elf announces a pivot to AI. <laughs> really? That's crazy. It's just like every coin is being an AI coin now. Wow. And deploys 50 million ecosystem fund. Steppen has teased a significant announcement on April 15th. So keep an eye on those GMT tokens. Komodo KMD is discussing key governance changes such as fee increase and burn and transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. Oh, don't do it, baby. Don't do it. I'm a big fanatic, a big supporter of proof of work. That is really where our uh, dem democracy, I guess you would say, in this thing comes from. Netmine AI announces new tokenomics on April 16th. This issuance will adjust the total supply from previous 10 billion to approximately 150 million in MT, including current circulation. MNT Bybit announces the launch of PBUX launchpad starting at April 18th. Strax Stratus announces that next week they will officially reveal their AI powered Web3 game. Codename Project Atlantis. And meanwhile, the Ton Ton Foundation announces a strategic partnership with Hashkey Group to enhance the Ton ecosystem. Keep your eye on that one. Keep your eyes on that one. Help me bow my way in, but keep your eyes on. And thank you for joining me for the Alcoin Alpha News today in crypto. We almost took out Elvis for a second time. Have to have a second funeral for Elvis. That just that has to change. That has to change. Shout out to all the lovely people who joined me tonight. Let's go say hello to everybody. We got Brackets Adventures chatting just a little bit about 80s music up there. Been a drummer for 30 years. Not me, him. I've been a failed musician for 30 years myself. Yeah, you can see my stuff and you can see why. Oh, I ain't shy about it. 
I do like song writing though. Brackets of interest that's tripping out to mushrooms and not the market. Well, you could, you could be tripping on both. I wouldn't trip on the market though. Enjoy the mushrooms. Let the market have its way. Why crypto? Hey, dog. Any up pattern for Gary? We can take a look at that. We got in the moment, Dave P. Strega, of course, Strega. We got Rising Sun. I think I've got everybody there. Might be a few lurkers out there. I like lurkers. I lurk a lot. All right, so Gary, let's take a look at Gary, see what might be happening with Gary. Quickly, just to remind you, get your coins off the wallet. <laughs> Get off of, off the exchanges and onto a wallet. Whatever wallet that you choose that you feel safe and comfortable with. Personally, when my glasses fall off my hat, it lets me know that I'm choosing the right wallet with tangent. <laughs> you just have to read the signs, people. <laughs> if you use the four-letter word D-A-W-G dog, either through the tangent app or on the tangent wallet site. Didn't save you 10% off your purchase there. Just something I can do for you guys. It helps you. It helps me. It helps us all. Here on the one hour. Whip, you down to 258. Weren't you up around? Yeah, I thought you were at $4. Ooh, wow. Let's go ahead and let's get into the charts. Take a look at Gary. You know, when when I first heard of Gary mentioned, I honestly, I thought it was a mean coin. I didn't pay very much attention to it. And I got to say, it's probably worthwhile looking a little bit at Gary. I should probably do a video on it at some point. We'll take a look at some of the fundamentals over here in Gary real quick. So Gary Network coming in with $11 million market cap, which is tiny. And if you're looking for a project that's going to grow and want to take that risk, well, well, that's a pretty much a golden child right there. In my personal opinion, we'll get into this right now. She's got a strong sell on the trader side of things over here. Circling supply for Gary Network is 437 million with a total supply of 997. So roughly almost half of that out in circulation. All time high for gear was 98 cents. And when you look at it, it being a two and a half cents right now, why that's a lot of multiples that can make you a lot of riches, which is why this one is on my radar because I like the multiples and I'd like to see that number go up. Let's take a look at this on the investor side. See what uh, token metrics has to say about this. Fundamental grade coming in, right? Dab in the middle, investor grade in the middle. So we're just kind of, you said, we're okay. We're good. Nothing extraordinary to report. I was hoping for a valuation grade and technology grade. Um, it'd be in a smaller project. We just don't have that information here quite yet. Take a look at the project itself to see exactly what it is that we might be investing in. And we see that Gary is the world's largest Web3 audio and video live streaming platform. Number eight, top grossing app on their Play Store. 200 million plus downloads and 125 thousand plus daily on-chain users available on the app store and google play partnerships include all these fine projects that you are probably familiar with there a community to join both on telegram and on discord empowering content creators worldwide with blockchain very interesting i locks it they look like they got something to work with an 11 million dollar market cap a nice little roadmap here saying that for uh, 2024, there will be SDK services for Aptos chain with Gary, Aptos ecosystem support tools, multi-chain NFT marketplace, multi-chain wallet standalone, multi-chain airdrop checker, wallet watcher, on-chain uh, quest and rewards, NFT marketplace aggregator, mining revamp, on-chain games integration, DEX integration and swaps is what they're planning to do this year. They've been around since 2021. Just slowly building their project and it looks like they've got a decent project to sell there what i like is when you think about this going back over here to this 11 million dollar market cap and if you think of this as a company an app company 
Well, hell, even that seems very affordable. We know that these things can add zeros, meaning they can go from 11 million to 100 million very quick in this type of market that we're in. So, I don't know. It's on my radar. It doesn't necessarily have to be on yours. I just advise that maybe at least take a look at it as we take a look at the chart here on the weekly just to get an idea of what's going on with Gary. So the weekly time frame is the big boy trying to that will give us all the information we need to play this one out. Let me take a few moments just to draw out a few areas here. Okay, now on the weekly time frame for the investor out there, well, you're in a very, a very lovely area of accumulation. And frankly, anywhere below this little red line that I have right here, three, seven, uh, three cents, 3.7 cents, anywhere below there, if you're an investor looking for a nice little project to build a bag in, Hoping to get a nice return, maybe 25x, maybe 50x. These are the areas that you want to take a look in. Now, down at the lows, we're down at a penny. Might we revisit that? That is always a possibility. We lost a trend line here. We can play with this one. Add this to the stack. We lost that little guy. Now, if we take measure moves from this to see where far that down that we could go, I mean, we're coming down to this area about 1.7 cents. So, you got some... In my personal opinion, this whole area, anywhere from 2.8 cents where we are now down to a penny. Great place to DCA, build a little bag of this. And it doesn't have to be a huge, huge bag, really, to see some nice, nice gains from this little guy. But eventually, we will break out of this very bullish pattern that we're in. This is a downward channel, which what typically happens with this setup is that it will bounce off the tops and the bottoms. Sometimes there will be two touches, sometimes there will be three. But at some point you get what is called a partial decline. Now we may be at that area now, it may be back down at this area here, somewhere around two cents. That is usually area where it will find support and then we'll try to come back up and break out one more time. Eventually we will get that breakout and then you can have a measure move just on the weekly time frame, just for this pattern alone. That move, we will adjust this to wherever price breaks out so that it will re remain accurate, but guesstimating at this point, that's all that we can do. Gets us a nice little target at about eight cents. Now, if you think about this for a moment, what if we do come down to this nice little area, about 1.7 cents, we do end up finding our way over the next months, several months. This is a little bit of a slow process until one day it's not and it goes really fast. Just coming up to that target, which is not even the high that it had over here a year ago. But just coming up to this target, that's 361% gains. Lost some excess. So this is the weekly. It's going to play out very slow, but I just wanted to bring these other really cool targets into play. Now, by my analysis on the much bigger time frame, well, this is in a very huge accumulation zone, which is bigger than just the area we're at now. Plus, it's the meaty part of the accumulation zone where the smart people will be building the bags. Later on, that accumulation zone can extend all the way up here to where this bottom wick is. Technically, after we 10x, that's when the real fun begins. What? Yeah. Because after we get out of this area, confirm getting over it, first we're going to confirm this small, meaty accumulation area, the meaty, juicy, meaty. The prime rib up it all, once we get past this area, this is just better and better. So for instance, let's take it from where we are now, if we come up to this target at 54, 53 cents, 1,800, 1,880% gains. Target of 67%. 
Well, you're, there's your 25X right there. She still has room to grow and actually now that it's in development wider use case if it catches on if it actually catches on if it makes a whole new all-time high what if it goes above 150 and you bought in here at two cents well you little genius because this is where the geniuses buy on a project just throwing that out there for gary network just on the weekly time frame now if you're trying to hone in on the four hour or god forbid the one minute trying to catch the the best places to get it well it's pretty much the same things that we discovered on the weekly there it's just telling you that yeah it'll probably happen again we're looking at around one cent 1.1 cent 1.7 and a half cents that area could be some nice places to look at adding this to your bag or just dcaing throughout this project if you're going to be strict about how to play this and try to work trades, you always want to see how price reacts at these levels. See if we get a bounce and see if we start making a higher high there. And then, you know, yep, I think that's a good one. Well, let's jump in. Well, that's what I got for Gary Network. I think it's one you should put on your radar because it can definitely make lots of gains. Nice little project. Lots of users. Lots of popularity. Not a meme coin. Might be a moneymaker, though. Gary Network. That might be a video after all. Holy crap. Try to bring up the chat over here. I lost the chat. I lose the chat all the time. Hello, Dave B. It's bleeding bad. Oh no, stop the blood. Ooh, hey, Brackets Adventures. Hey, welcome to the Van Club, my man. All right, I'm just looking for any. Uh, Gary's on Mexi. Gary looks good to go. I, I like it. She can definitely come down. So, I mean, just just think about it. I mean, if it's at. Where are we at? We're at two and a half cents. So, like, if you threw $1,000 in right now. And it comes down to one thing. You're going to get pissed at me when your bag's only worth like 500. So it's much better if you can wait and, you know, throw a thousand in when it's down here. And then when it comes back to where we are now, you got $2,000 and you're thinking, road dog, you're a genius. So for the sake of my reputation, <laughs> please enter wisely <laughs> and then brag like hell about it. No, I'm, just, I'm just playing. But I mean, that's just part of our psychology of this game. If you can handle drawdown, you want to DCA nibble in? Yeah. You want to catch them? Put your alerts there and try to catch the bottoms. DCAing, there's another wrong with that strategy. Just know that while you do it, while you build positions, they often go down for a little while until we get out of that little accumulation zone. Such as what I've uh, been going through over on Coin W, Coin X, um, with my margin, spot margin trades. They're all doing good. I did have to go kind of reinforce them today with this drop that we had just to make sure they're okay. And I actually got liquidated on one. Oh, I hate to admit that, but I, I was trying to catch it and somehow it slipped past me before I could get there to, uh, to help it out a little bit and she got away from me. It was a small bag of render. I took a, I've got a moon bag of render and I took a portion of that moon bag, put it over in Coon and I'm trying to build up a bigger bag. Well. What did I do? I immediately took that value, put back in dollar-wise, and I opened my position up because, dang, we're low. Let's take a look at Render. See what Render did, because she swapped me out on one of my positions today. Where I'm trying to accumulate, and I normally have these calculated pretty well. That one got me. Not bad, though. It was important for me to get back in as soon as I could established I'm not going to my full bag established yet but to, to get back in so I have a good entry so that when we come back up to these areas which we will well this loss will now be negated and then I'll be back and I should be back in good graces back in where I was before so knowing how to navigate these losses and even liquidations you know there it's not the end of the world if if you got a backup plan and you always got to have that backup plan. I was just hoping not to have to use my backup plan. But the backup plan saves the day. So, 
Render? She came all the way down? I know, it sounded like, I don't, I don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening. And this is how it happens. <laughs> Crazy crap like this in the market. And then all of a sudden those targets like, there's no way. There's just, it's just too bullish. It's just too, it's not going to do it. It's not going to. Mother, <laughs> if it didn't just do it. <laughs> Welcome to crypto. <gasps> Where all these targets seem impossible until that one day. <laughs> Holy crap. So she wicked all the way down here, but now we're back above this trend line. So that's kind of cool for render. So we might even come back. There's this saying that often what gets wicked often gets candlesticked in, in trading. So if we came down here to wick, she may just come down here and just double test that little area. So I've got orders. I've got orders all the way down through here to build up an, a nice little margin position of render and that's how i'm playing that it was bad i didn't like losing it but we're already on the right track to get her back where she needs to be now any other point in the market i wouldn't be thinking that way but we are in a very bullish part of the market we're in markup season we're Lehman accumulation and now we're market phase. This is just how it goes. There are those big drops, those big flush outs. And um, I'm playing those odds that in this market phase, we're not going to come down and make these lower lows and call to come back down into all these past accumulation areas because that's just not how the market cycle plays out. So the odds are in my favor that, yeah, this little strategy I'm using right here is going to going to turn out. And if it doesn't, I just look like an idiot. If it doesn't, I'll just chuck it off as another loss in this game with my other gains to make up for it. But just letting you go. I will probably break that down in a little bit more detail in a membership stream that we may be doing this weekend. I don't know. Render. You guys got anything you want to look at? What's freaking you guys out? I mean, dang. They look at your portfolio. It might be sad. There may be one or two out there that says, What? I don't know. I sold and I'm nailing it. Yeah. There are the people out there that played it perfectly. There are. We don't always have to be there. And it depends on what kind of game you're playing. Maybe check out AMP. Let's take a look at AMP. AMP, Binance. Let's check that one out. Gets Tether. That should be a decent chart. Kind of the same situation, man. Oh, I hadn't looked at this one in a minute. Oh, we were looking here. Oh my gosh. When was this? This was um, July of 23 charting it here before she just tanked down to nothing 0 0.001 um but imagine what if you were building your bag here and even though it tanked down and said road dog you suck i'm down 50 percent because of you <laughs> whatever if you <laughs> buying here holding there man this thing's already done like a five six x how far did you, oh my gosh how far did you go up i'm not in amp but it looks like we were we were looking at this at some point. Um, it already it did a 10x, and then what did it do? If you're holding on to your bags up there, you make that 10x, and you don't pay yourself. Well, you watch it come down 70 percent. So that thousand, if you put, <laughs> if your bag was a thousand dollars at a 10x, it's all the way back down to 300. So it's important to take profits and pay yourself and pull your capital out and have those strategies in place for when opportunities like this arise let's clear this guy out and let's take a look at him accumulation levels we can just eyeball it right here boom 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 so even just eyeballing it but i like to get the fibs out because i don't know it just makes life easier It seems to nail it a little better. A little bit more finesse. So basically this red line here is our accumulation zone. It's the easiest way to explain it. Go below it, we're accumulating. Again, spending more time accumulating. It hangs out 
for a long time under here people slow it by break above it though price gets that's when it gets interesting and then, then we got break above it we got that big pump, right it is very common for it to come back and retest these areas so it coming back to half a penny possible really freaking possible another technique you can use here is the swing low to swing high tell me where i need to buy a fibonacci trick that's telling us that well there might be some support here maybe but a good area to look for is this one right here at the 886 which i'm just going to throw that green 0 0.004 we'll just make a big old not that big we'll make a horizontal line there color him purple So for AMP, I see that as being on some nice areas to look at possibly looking for a reversal at these areas and bounce or, well, it will at one of, at some point, it just needs to find a reversal area. This is when I like to draw my little trend lines out and then I can kind of finagle these, whoops, the scenario a little bit better, kind of paint out a possible situation here that might come into play. So if she does come down to 4.0048, I expect to be a quicker move than not, but there's a trend line that she can definitely bounce off of before she starts working to make a higher high. I know, make a higher low and then we make a higher high and then a nice high there. And again, just bouncing off of there, going back to where we were before. That's 424% gains. It's making me starting to look at AMP now. Now, when you consider or try to figure out how high that she can go after we break out of accumulation. Looking to the left, you see this area of congestion, which we got confluence with the 618 Fibonacci. Looks like the perfect area, in my personal opinion, to shoot for as a nice target to maybe pay yourself, reevaluate your situation, plan your next move. But imagine a nice 720% gains for the patient people to get in at these bottoms and play that little guy. And that's how it's done in crypto. Most of your money is made longer term, not the shorter term and buying in accumulation zones nice rounded bottoms anything any revisits to these areas to retest them the best thing this is a welcome opportunity people to top off those spot bags and maybe those low margin very low margin plays we're talking like maybe one two, well, you're talking like two three x positions spot margin maybe even futures if you want to go through all that fee stuff that they just like to rob you with um these are these are the places that you want to look for that in my bird opinion this is never financial advice this is just crypto opinion from the road dog who's done a lot of stupid stuff in the past <laughs> tries to tell you what that stupid stuff is so you can avoid it don't do the stupid stuff i have done Road Dog's done lots of stupid. Sam says Proppy's still doing good. Proppy is still doing good. Let's take a look at Proppy against Bitcoin. Just because that's something you need to be aware of, man. The ones that are really going to nail it in this market are paying attention to how their coins are performing against Bitcoin. Just straight up. That's the OG trick. That's the OG school. That's getting away from the dollar mentality, which if you really, really want to knock it out, you need to. Not many coins are performing well against Bitcoin. Very, very few. Most of them are dying. If you, your smartest move, and I've said this before, and even a lot of people, I don't know. It's, I know it strikes people as odd because I was like, I didn't used to believe it myself either. So I had to actually sit there and math it out and like, oh my God. We're kind of stupid buying these altcoins. And sometimes we are. A lot of the bags I've got in all coins, I mean, I would have been better off being in Bitcoin. Bitcoin, they have not outperformed it. Probably is right now. Solana is right now. Right now. And they kind of take turns, but eventually in the game, they will outperform Bitcoin. It's just usually later on, like maybe a year, 
15 months from now, somewhere. And then we will see the big games against Bitcoin with all coins. But here, Proppy against Bitcoin is doing a nice little double bottom, meaning, man, she can still... She can still make them Bitcoin gains. Doesn't mean that you have to buy this in Bitcoin, although it is tradable. But just keep that in the back of your mind. If, if your coin is making gains against Bitcoin, you're in the right coin. I'll say it that way. You're in a good one. Coming back up just to confirm this double bottom doubles the Bitcoin and then some from FOMO in right now. So let's take a look at this on the uh, and well, let's not jump out there too quickly. How, how well could she do against Bitcoin? I mean, imagine this, if, if, if I'm patient, the property that I bought for dollars, which is starting to grow, I didn't put a whole, whole lot, but I've still got time to build a bag because we're in this juicy double bottom accumulation zone where all the real money is made, not at the time, but it's where the bags, the famous bags are made that will change your life. So from where we are to point zero 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 two three Bitcoin per proppy, you have four extra Bitcoin. If you put a quarter of a Bitcoin in on this right now, I'm not saying do it just as an example, there'd be a possibility to walk out of this with a full Bitcoin when proppy reaches this area. Crazy, right? Let's take a look at proppy on the dollar so it makes sense to most of you guys. Proppy. It's hard to think in Bitcoin. It really is. Proppy's over on Mix. Make sure we got the right one. We got a Prop C. We got a Prop S. And we got a Prop E. And it's Proppy. It's on base that we're looking for, really. Come on, boys. So here we are against the Odala. The Odala. Which is also rocking against right now. She's come up to the 786. Obviously got rejected there. Now we're hanging around the 618 above it. Looks like we're above it at the moment on the one moment of five day. Let's narrow this little guy down a little bit. Interesting. Okay, let's mark those areas. We'll get rid of that bib. So she may, I don't know for sure that, but this is usually a good rejection. These are both reject, good rejection points. Meaning that we may have a top. Meaning that now we can take a Fibonacci from swing low to there and get an idea where she might pull back to. And that has given us these areas right over here. If I can just ever find what I'm looking for over here. And basically that means that this is the excellent buy place. That's kind of a big buy zone, I know. But within this buy zone, you got three very special Fibonacci areas, the 886, 786, and ye o faithful 618. Attached to these awesome Fibonacci's are also some awesome price levels. The lowest being somewhere around 79.80 cents. The middle child being at 120. And the first in line we'll look at is somewhere around 179. Great areas to add into your DCA strategy or trading strategy, in my personal opinion, if we get a pullback. Eventually, we will. Those are the first areas I'm looking at for it to come back and retest for Proppy. Until then. But what if it just keeps on going up? Well, if we can be that fortunate, then I want to look at these guys. The 
Is that the end all be all? No, there's actually another target it could reach, but it's kind of doubtful that it will. It's more the hopium target. But what the hell? Let's put it out there. Just in case. That way, if it ever does hit it, and eventually will, I'll just post a thumbnail saying, look, we nailed it. If you'd been in my group, you would be up 6,000%. And that's how that game is played. Oh, shoot, I should have done that one on the amp one. Look, you would have been up 10. <laughs> that's how the game's played. I didn't take that play. I hadn't looked at that play in a year, but by gosh, if there's a chart there that we put out there, let's claim it. Get people in our group. I'm sorry. It's just the YouTube antics that we see these days. $7.69 as a very hopeful target, a very wishful target. We are not. That's a possibility, but it would take a long time and lots of ups and downs for it to make it up there. I do see it as a target, though. Most notably, I'll be looking at about 545 being a nice little place that it probably, if it's going to make a higher high than what it had over here, if it keeps going bullish, that's probably where she'll tire out at and then get a, a serious retracement. Or the next little stop would be 607. I'm not expecting anything higher than that if it, we even make it up there. But honestly, I think that uh, this would be the good area for us to come back and retest these areas. Let's keep an idea. We well, look at our indicators on the bigger time frames. It might help us out a little bit. And uh, while they're kind of toppy, the biggest thing that we see, man, is money flow. Not quite in the green, but eventually it's going to make it over there. And when it does, oh, that's going to be juicy. For prop. Proppy. Why does there so much hair in my face? Ah. And Aerodrome is holding up. So the real world asset plays. All right, yeah, they're holding their, the good ones are holding their ground. Now, the, the only thing bad about crypto, you will get the solid projects that are being put out there. And right now, I think there's very some very real solid RWA projects, mostly from the, 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 uh, the institutional side. Getting all those, I think, would be excellent and smart. But you're going to see a lot of other cryptos just join the bandwagon like they do with the AI. Oh, we're, we're, our, we're real world assets now. They just want to get a part of the market cut. And that's what I don't like about crypto because that's very misleading. Then you start seeing coins that change their narrative. Those are coins that I start not trusting as much. Now, there might still be a play there to make some money out of them. But if you're looking for the serious, serious money that we're starting to attract in, they're not going there. <laughs> Only the suckers are going there. And right now, I'm, I'm very interested in following the owed money as it comes into crypto. You know what I mean? Pay very careful attention to how the institutions position themselves in here. And the real projects, the, the real direction that this stuff is going. We are going to see more real world use cases out of blockchain. But it will be a slow take on a lot of it. There's going to have to be a lot of regulation to come into place there. <laughs> you can see how fast that's happening. So, just things to factor in. I had squirrel brain again. Aerodrome. So Aerodrome, hot on base. She's looking good. <laughs> it seriously looks like that we are now in this megaphone pattern. Oh, look, she, uh, what was that even? Was that today? Yeah, nice. So even today she wicked below we just, we just put a half, we, we just took this, put it up here, follow that trend line. She respected that. I mean, she, she lost it, but she came back and respected it. That says a lot. That's kind of like, well, this bear trap idea is still in play here, right? In other words, it, we should probably see it going up. She looks good. Let's see, there's bears divergence there, but that seems to have played out. 
there is always the chance to come back and retest these lines. We can move this up now. We were hanging around, what, 127? Looking at that area, maybe. Now we can move this up. Sometimes you can kind of get a trajectory on this and kind of, you know, try to line up your prices against the trend line like that. Sometimes that helps. Give you a little bit more of a realistic price point that it can touch. Right now, I just want to see it just flip this area. And then we can start looking at maybe even 292 out of this guy. Aerodrome looking good. Check out Ondo, the real world asset that's uh, in a bit of a pullback. So we can clear this chart out a little bit. Get rid of the old fibs. So Ondo, hmm. That's interesting. Air trap, I am expecting the bottom of the trend line. Almost made it, but not quite. Well, Fibonacci swing low to swing high. Tell me where I need to buy. I'm still getting confluence down here. Nine across the 21. Finding support on the 50 moving average and the 618. Got confluence there, so. Let's take you, move you down here. So that might be the level. She did wick down there. She might come back. 53. Any of the, either of these or anywhere in between. And this is what I consider my buy zone through here. Even even technically it's down low down to 886 for real. Because it could always wick down there. So when I'm looking at this, this is what I consider the, the nice little buy areas. I doubt that it comes back to 46 cents, but hey, you never know. If it did, it's still okay because it's still a higher low from what we made here. So it's technically on the table and we just have to, that's how we have to look at it. And when, so we see how price reacts, it may bounce. You may be degen. Honestly, a lot of times when I'm playing this, given the market structure that we're in, knowing that we can always get the spill, that we can always throw back the, all these low, low, low areas. Yeah, I know, but uh, I just put in straight limit orders and let it ride. I'm, I'm not over here making it on the spot. If I'm on spot, I'm just putting lemon orders in, letting it ride, building a bag. That's because we're in accumulation and breaking out. We're, we're in the perfect part of the market. I'm not concerned as much about a stop loss unless I'm actually trading at this point in the market. And that's just me. And that's the thing about crypto and people. We all have different risk tolerances and, and that's where mine's at. Doesn't mean don't bite me in the ass though. Sometimes I have to sit down and ride through this bag, you know? Like for instance, if uh, this little guy decides it doesn't want to pay ball and bounce off of here and start doing something, going to the upside, so it decides it wants to do something like this for a while. Well, then I get caught up in that with this whole bag thing. But they are my longer term plays, more like I can't call them swing trades because a lot of these I'm holding for months, months, months. So they're, they're more of a, a position trade, but that's where I found that the biggest gains come from. Plus all the little fun trades you can do in between. Slender says holding probably would dump so I can get some more. Well, it may. It will at some point, trust me. Somebody will say, man, I need to buy a lot and I need to buy it cheaper. What can you do for me? Market maker, I got you, brother. Watch me work my magic. And there we have a dump. Carlos Perez, hey, welcome to stream, man. Bitcoin miners will begin to sell to buy new equipment. After having, they will need better teams of computing. Bitcoin will continue to drop between 40,000 to 48. Written Macazos are coming. That's a way to look at it. I don't. I, I can see the miners and the equipment and they're structuring that in. Miners are getting savvy though. The smart ones are finding offsets. And I put an article about this over on the uh, in the trading group today. Let's talk about that for a minute because this is very interesting. Now that you happen to have brought that topic up. 
I didn't share that, right? Oh, I might not have shared that one. I might have thought, oh, that's too boring for you. It might bore people. Oh, well, gosh darn it. Oh, don't. It may still be up here. Let's see if we can find that. It should be over there. I should put that over there. It's a very, a, a decent article is breaking all that stuff down and talking about that today. So basically miners, yeah. The ones that have been in the game, they, they know how this game goes. And when the hatch rate gets up and, and when they have to, the happenings coming on and there's so much competition. Yeah, they do have to invest in, in new things, but they're also spreading things around into some other areas. They're also leasing out computation to AI for AI computation. They're taking other ways to offset losses. So they're stepping up their game. So I think they're 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 finally getting smarter enough now. So they're not going to experience the down. They're not going to have to sell as much. They don't want to sell. They don't like selling. Not when they're <laughs> they would much rather play this game and sell it highest too, right? And sometimes they get forced for paying bills. I can't find I will find this and I'll post it over in the Telegram group, but it was a, it was a great little article today. But we got a lot of them are starting to change their dynamics there, and that's going to help them withstand a lot of the, the pressure. So calling for a forty thousand dollar drop in Bitcoin, not saying that it couldn't happen. I'm just saying I think it's probably a little unlikely, and I could be totally wrong. But to do that, you're going to have to come all the way back down here and flirt with making a lower low. Technically, you could. You can come all the way back down here. And as long as you make a higher low, yeah, you're still in good standing. But then you just throw away this whole trend that we've been on. You would even throw away this backup trend that we got. That would be devastating to me because that would introduce a new dynamic to it that would actually not just make a stop at 40 that would be bringing us back down to around 28 if if we start messing with this trend line so i can give you some validity uh, validity up to a certain point but i'm going to have to kind of step in and, and say man if breaking below 50 <laughs> i'd be i would be looking for much lower than 40 in that situation So let's hope it don't go that way. Let's hope that this, this trend line that we got here holds and then we can all just, you know, bounce off somewhere along that trend line and go to a higher high. No guarantees for this or for any scenario. The best thing to do is follow the charts and the indicators and Pay attention to those bigger time frames. They will lead you in the right direction, in my personal opinion. Slenda says, one would think that they could borrow money against their Bitcoin. One would be thinking very smart if they thought about that. The, the, that's, the, that's the mentality shift that we've got to get to. Um, you can screw yourself up. I mean, but it is an asset. You don't want to borrow against it. It's tempting to borrow against it when it's high, right? Because you get the most money. But that's also when you can lose the most. I like to borrow against Bitcoin when it's cheap. That's the secret to borrow against Bitcoin, in my personal opinion. Because if you borrow, I mean, I know Bitcoin sucks when it's at 25,000, right? But you borrow half of it there. And then as it keeps going up, uh, it's so much easier to you can borrow more i mean and pay it back e easier um the people that get in trouble borrowing with bitcoin are usually the ones that want to borrow like the people who borrowed at the tops yeah they got liquidated so not there and you're like well i can't borrow as nearly as much as i need to down here well at that moment in time but you know as the number goes up in the cycle i don't know i i think it's a very smart thing I think it's a very smart thing. And considering this, you got Bitcoin at the top of the market over here. Yeah. Okay. So we're, what, we're at 70,000 or let's say we're at 200,000 and we're coming down for the next cycle. I guess I'm, I'm going to build like a chump holding Bitcoin. No, man. Short it. Borrow against it. I mean, if you're shorting, you're borrowing against it anyway, but you're building more Bitcoin on the way down. So, I mean, it's not like... 
you won't get liquidated shorting unless it else is the upside. Just another idea of what you can do. That's what I want to do. I'm taking Bitcoin. I will probably sell. I'm, uh, it's hard for me to decide yet, but I'm planning on maybe selling half, keeping half, and then I'll be playing the the part of that on the way down, shorting it, building, trying to actually build Bitcoin, shorting down with the um, USD pairs, the Bitcoin USD pairs. And so set up, that's my, that's part of my game plan. I've already got that in effect. I know how to short, know what to look for to short and for all that situation. I don't have to learn it when I get there. <clears throat> there are some influencers out there that don't have that down yet. They were too busy doing the, the 3X coins and really didn't understand the shorting concept. And so it's going to be interesting to see how their strategies are going to work as the market changes. But that's a year and a half from now. We can wait. That's just something I'm watching. Maybe they'll learn something between now and then, but uh, they won't have the experience because they, they didn't do it. And that's going to be interesting. To see how those 15 years make another 2 million in a bear market, magically. And of course, she's talking about the miners. One would think that they could borrow money against their Bitcoin, the miners. Yeah, that too, really. <laughs> Especially when we're high right now, right? And you don't have to borrow all against them. They, but, but I think they are looking to a lot of different things. And I'll try to find an article. But they're branching out into several different areas, not just AI and GPU and, and, and the computing power, leasing that out for other things other than just Bitcoin. But, you know, historically, there's been some times when the hash rate gets too high, they have to cut off their miners because it's just it's not productive for them at that point in time. Personally, from a hobby standpoint, I'm sitting here looking at these machines and that why maybe they're not turning a profit. Maybe maybe I buy a miner and for whatever Bitcoin it mines, I'm down ten dollars every month in electricity costs because it's not it's not pulling a profit. But to me, I'm looking at that. I'm still buying this Bitcoin. This miner is helping me buy some really cheap Bitcoin. It's cheaper than I would have paid for it if I'd been paying out. See, so there, there's some interesting ways to look at this and just because a miner is not profit. I mean, just from a hobby standpoint. And as the market increases over time, it can still be a very profitable adventure. It's I'm looking for some altcoins. I see no request. That means you're going to look at the ones I want to look at. Take a look at... Oh, I did a video on ICP today, didn't I? Well, how, how is ICP stacking up right now? I know it was going for $9. Target like, is like over here like... That's not what's going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Until one day. I still don't know if it's going to happen, but it's got a chance. It's got a much better chance now. We got a couple trend lines here to follow. I like ICP. I really do. Um, we talked about it last night. Last night, very, very interested to see what they do. Normally, we break back into the pattern. You're looking at the bottom pattern, and so that could be around 10 21. Maybe, maybe not. Didn't we made a higher low? Maybe that'll stick. I would rather see that than 10 22. To be honest with you, I'd rather see this higher low stick here at 11 dollars. Let's fiddle around, play around, and maybe come back above this trend line. We can adjust this now. Oh, do I want to? And now start taking into account some of these other candle tops we got here. So now we're starting to get more of a megaphone pattern, depending on how this plays out. So we'll keep an eye on that. Or we're disrespecting. I don't, I don't, maybe. I don't, I'm not seeing the angle quite pronounced there. Keep an eye on ICP, but that's just the local thing, right? <laughs> that's just the local pattern. 
the bigger picture when you zoom out is this nice, gorgeous double bottom here that we broke out of. And, you know, look over here to the wicks. Horizontal line right there. Make it big and uh, bodacious. To retest this area, which is also confluence with these diagonal trend lines and this diagonal trend line and this channel. A lot of confluence that we're just retesting the breakout area, basically, the of the accumulation zone. Meaning that bouncing off of here about $10, oh, let's go look at a juicy target. Now this identifies our bigger accumulation area, which is more of a zone. We got some wicks down here, I'd actually include that in there, about $28. That's just me talking though. Getting above this $22 area on ICP, which would be a 2X from the prices that we're looking at, close to 2X from the prices we're looking at now and the targets we're looking at now. $44, $54, $69. I don't even think I put this in my video today, did I? I can't tell. I think I edited out a lot of the stuff. Oh well. I think we got the point across. For right now, anyway. So I don't know if ICP will ever make it up to $500 a coin again. It might. If they do all the stuff, if they can pull off all the stuff that they're going to, I think it probably could. I think it would end up getting real hot and everybody say, oh, wow. Let's can actually do a lot. Man, I don't know. We have to wait and see, but uh, I'm looking for something kind of like this. And let's just say, what if it, uh, from where we are at $13, which I think is a great place for DCA, or if you don't have a bag, it's a good place to start nibbling to build one. 244, 320% gains right there. 427% gains right there. So it's easy to three to five X ICP just to these levels. And we're not even talking about getting to 115, which I do think I had that on my video. Nice, nice, nice. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we've got this thing in the nice little rounding shape. A lot of times you'll see it come up and, and retest these areas. So maybe 80. And it, you know, does kind of like a, a weird Martian looking. They look like those little plush Martians to me when I think about this. If we were to invert this. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you might see a pull back and then another big, then we get a nice little pop up. That would be kind of cool to look for, for ICP. To see happen. Can we look at soil? That one rings a bell, DP. Something makes me think this is one I was supposed to put on my note, my sticky note that I didn't go look at. That's the kind of vibe that I'm getting right now. I'm getting the feeling this is the real world asset that I was supposed to look into that I forgot about. Am I right, DP? Is that what I'm looking at? Let's take a look at soil. Soil's got an $18 million market cap, which is tiny, currently coming in at $2.58. Its all time high was $2.89, so we're not too far away from that. No, its all time high was $3.97. Learn to read a chart, Rodop. So we got a little ways from there. 24 hour high was 289. All time low was nine cents. Wow, what a come up from there. Currently we've got to buy in the trader zone over here. There's seven million of these coins in circulating supply with 100 million total supply. So we got a little bit discrepancy there between what's out and what can be thrown upon us. Let's keep that in mind. Looking for the investor grade, investor grade we we're kind of in the neutral between the sell signals there. What's cool about it, we got a 48.96% valuation grade, 41% investor grade, fundamental grade of 40. Little lacking on some of those, but the valuation grade says it's, it's undervalued. Meaning there might be a good opportunity to make a come up. Let's take a little look at the project itself, I'm out a little bit about it. Go to the website, Soil Secure Returns on Stable Coins Backed by Real World Assets. Real World Asset Play here, the yield of 14%, fully secure by 
real world assets. Let's launch that app just to see what this sucker looks like. Got a little dashboard. I accept the terms of the service. I am 18 years or older. So we got earning swap investing. Kind of what you see on your DEXs over there. Interesting play. What else can we learn about this? In a fully -regulate, regulated DeFi protocol managed by professionals. Mm hmm. So that perks my ears up when we start getting into them. The big boys getting into here. Three dots, Game Swift, Engine Starter, Hacking Pools, Fractal, Blockchain Ventures Hub, Polygon Mount, TFI, Big Brain Holdings, Market Across. Interesting look at it. We got our development her team right here. How it works. Crypto investors lend stable coins. The soul protocol provides liquidity to the fiat world, brings back yield to soul protocol, and earns issues for the crypto investors. Soul token. So that's something we can check out. Let's look at the charts and see what that looks like right now. So that's pretty juicy. I've got a trend line right here that I would be looking for it to retest on this drop somewhere around two dollars. What I would be running with. Let's do a little Fibonacci. See if we got any confluence with that. We do with our six one eight Fibonacci right here at one ninety seven. So let's lean with that. It's probably the easiest way. That's what I look for. If we break back into this trend line. I would be looking at possibly coming to the bottom of this trend line, which would be that's no bueno, no fun. Not fun at all. If that situation was to happen, well, then we would good look at 86 cents. Got a little confluence with this little area of support or resistance, rather. A little local talk that we have. So that's a dollar six cents, and then the bottom of the trend line again, wherever price falls, depend on the. The trajectory, about 80 cents. So, soil looks pretty good. I look for about here around two dollars. She looks like she's flagging out really nice. And it's a crazy possibility, but nonetheless, it is a possibility that there could be a flag for here. That could take us up to five dollars thirty-six cents. That would be a measure move for the bull flag pattern that is possibly forming. Put a few little notes there so I won't forget this stuff. Fibonacci wise. There is some confluence for that area, the 1618, 525. If we come down and bounce off that area, I'm projecting into the future there, so it's not confirmed. If we wanted to pull out a few more tricks of the trade here, just for some confluence, have a little fun with it, just to see what they say. Oh, gosh darn it, I got you in reverse. Off a of reverse. Yeah, yeah, you're you too far gone. You're not though. Your big, strong hands. Crying out like a baby once I knew I was asleep. Hoping that I won six one eight. Three six one eight. So as just a reminder, what, what I'm doing right here, this is that one target that we got over here on total three. That's what this is. The three six one eight. That's that's usually the toppy top. That's usually, hey man, I need to take a real big chill pill about right now. That's what we got right here. You see this? This is what I keep talking about over here on total three that's a 3.618 Fibonacci area that's why I keep saying pay yourself that's why that's why I've been saying that ever since we first started coming up here you need to be paying yourself you need to be paying yourself you need to be paying yourself 
This is a toppy top area. We could see something kind of drastic happen. And uh, gosh darn it, if today wasn't the day that we started seeing more of the effects from that. A lot similar to what we saw the first time. But we lived through the first time. We can live through the second. We just got to find an area where we're going to find support. It needs to be on this trend line. If it's not, hmm. Well, we got to change our uh, change our strategies on all coins for a little bit if it doesn't. It's not horrible. We got to play it smarter. So that's the, the, the warning of the 3618 there. Not horrible. Just mean, hey, man, come down here and then we start this little sucker all over again. Same thing on total three. The game's not over. You just have to go through a little period of pain that we're not excited about, but let's just go ahead and start talking about it now because, well, Sam Webb says, what do you think about Goldfinch? I like Goldfinch. I like that one a lot. I was tipped onto it before she got hot, but I didn't move on it. It was Ian Bellina. I heard him talking about it. It was on my radar. Um... So, I mean, what I did have was very small, or I don't know. I'm in it now. We, we got our bags building now and working on adding to those. I can't remember if I got in. It was, I wasn't buying the tops. I wasn't doing that, but it was, it was around through here when I started. To, oh, crap. I missed it. I'll jump in. So, same thing with it. I'm just expecting a bounce probably off of this trend line here i mean that's normally what we see but there there's there could be some stops in between this trend line that we're finding support on maybe it'll stay i mean the nine hasn't crossed over the 21 moving average yet so we got some hope for it if that does cross then i'm just looking for this one so if we lose this trend line that would suck i got a measure move here i don't think i need that for anything because if we break back in this pattern, I'm always immediately looking at the bottom of the pattern because, well, that's just it tends to gravitate toward. Should always be on your radar to look at the bottom of whatever pattern we broke out of, break back into it. So don't want to see that happen. Don't see it happen yet. Lost this trend line. That was the first warning sign. Always the first warning sign is when you first lose your major trend line. That's your first sign. I might need to get out. When you lose the nine moving average, that's your first warning sign. If you're trading, that's your good sign that I might need to get out. That's why I love the not moving average. The trend lines are always your friends. So if you're out here following these big moves, that trend line's your friend, man, because you know when you break it, something's happening. It may just be a little, it may be a lot. Usually in this market, it's usually just a little when we're bullish. Interesting thing about these trend lines that when they do break them, gosh darn it. If you get really finesse it, I mean, technically, I'm not going to finesse it right now, but we'll just do it as I would normally draw it. We said we, we come up and we start retesting those areas. Now you're like, but I didn't. Well, if I finesse my trend line and actually take it to the bottoms of these candles over here, don't cut through them. I'm, I'm relying most of these touches right here, right? They're not giving me the full picture. This little break over here is though. When I take it to there, look, boom, total retest of that trend line. So just little things to look at, but breaking the trend, something, something bad happens. It just does. May not happen immediately. It may happen on the next bump up. Trend lines are amazing. Love them. They tell me a lot. They save my butt a lot. Grizzozo Grisbin on a crypto vacay. Sometimes you need to do that. Back just in time, I think. I think you picked a pretty good time if you're coming back today, Grizz. The red days are the best days to start looking at buying anyway. Justin says, Casper, bro. Justin says, I'm up on my 30x long. On Casper? That's a ballsy move on Casper. Oh, Casper. 
Uh, this is when she's playing with the devil. That's supposed to be the devil. It's don't really look like the devil. Though. Speaking of the devil. Where's she hanging out at right now? Unless she had to be a part of the equation somewhere. Let's see how she's playing into this game. Try to tell Kanja. Try to tell Casper to go to the angels. Go toward the light. Go up. There's Lucy way down here. Oh, Lucy, what are you trying to say? Lucy hanging around. Y'all don't know Lucy. She's a 666 moving average devil girl that we got on here. I know. It sounds like a joke. It sounds kind of weird and crazy, but you do the back test and you find that moving average. That's a lot of play on the market. It really does. See the confluence right here at this trend line. Lucy's just coming in there to offer her little evil bout of support there. I don't even know if I need this anymore. It's kind of cool to hang around. I think we've exceeded that. We get rid of that little guy. So, this is the trend line that we've been holding, trying to hold. I'd say it's probably safe to say we lost that little guy. Well, you want to take a measure and move from that little guy. You can see Casper down all the way down to 4.8 cents. Now watch everybody click off my channel right now for seeing that. Measure and move for that probably would not play out as strong, but worth noting, Lucy's down here ready to catch us. Give us a good little talking to an eight something cents. That will screw up my um, spot margin thing. If you do that, I would have to come to the rescue of that. I don't want to see that happen. Let's talk about the good things we got. We got the 800 moving average. We got Lucy hanging out above it. We got the 360 over here. And then we got the 200. Basically, all of our moving averages are strong up and to the right. I'm not worried about those crossing. I'm not really technically worried about Lucy coming into play right here. I'm, I'm watching this 360 area here, finding support there. That's what I want to see hold. As long as the moving averages are stacking up in their order, I think we're okay. I'm not as concerned. Even though we've wicked down or we're below this trend line and that kind of sucks right now. All right, so let's come down to a smaller time frame. Let's get rid of these prices because they're distracted. Bounce somewhere here. Move some of this stuff around. Bearish under the four, the four hour 200 moving average. I mean, that's just what we do. It's been kind of bearish for a while though. Nothing really big and new you want to take your local pattern there that channel and take a measure move from that little guy give it an idea about where we can come down to and we're kind of there about 11.8 maybe nice v-shape nice little possible double bottom area from here not a very clear support resistance flip but there might be one right here it looks like there is actually it does look like there is so support 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 a little resistance a little resistance it's a kind of a fuzzy zone but that's worth looking at 11.5 cents Another one to watch out for is this little guy right here. 9.5 cents. So if you look at this in levels, you know, as long as we're bouncing off of here, we're, we're safe. Lose this level. Then, we, of course, we start looking at this level. And then we start looking at the trend line. And then it just gets all fuzzy and not very fun. So is Casper going to go up or go down? That's the question, right? I would say look to your daily, you're probably coming down to test this 200 moving average. So we could be seeing this 10 cent area wicking down to it. Oh, that would suck. You guys just feel like they're just trying to dump on us. <laughs> Dead 
Daily MACD does not look very juicy at the moment for Casper, though. She's doing this little bearish thing here. Now, it wasn't so bad over here, so. And she's still above that area here. Keep an eye on that. But, you know, there's definitely bearish signs in the market right now over the weekend. I'm curious to see what it will look like tomorrow and Sunday. I think we'll start seeing a little bit more coming to the market then. Remember, Hong Kong ETF, Monday. Hong Kong ETF. Just to kind of bring us back to Earth for what, you know, the rest of the world's doing. Just Not just here in the USA, where we're just kind of only know what the news tells us, where we've been... Just all this propaganda. I don't know when we turned into old Germany, but it sure does seem like we're headed that way. Maybe Operation Paperclip became the deep state. Where's my tinfoil hat? So then it says big time sure is cheap right now. I bet it is. That one's been kind of, I mean, she was hot for a while, remember? And, that, and that's the bad thing. You'll see coins that will get hot and then they get the run ups. Let's talk about this for a moment. I think this is kind of important when it comes to trading. If you listen to a lot of the traders that are really nailing the markets and things, they have a strategy with coins like this. And in the trading thing, once they get the run up like this, they move on. They're out, they move on. And that wouldn't have been a bad call on big time. Honestly, we got up to right, not quite a dollar, right? And since then it's, I mean, you know, we've not made it back. Not saying that we won't. And 21 cents does look like a juicy area to buy it. It was definitely juicy over here. Remember this area? We're back at those same areas before it actually made that big run up that got everybody on fire for this coin anyway. 330% run up there. Could it do it again? Well, yeah, it could. And it can. I expect it to at some point to do something very similar. Well, the trick is finding out when when that's going to be, right? So what can we figure out for this little guy? Since this cup and handle to the upside. Kind of flattened out on everybody. You know, I figured since this channel is associated with Randy Dandy, for those of you guys that don't know, Randy Dandy does come on the stream every once in a while. Randy Dandy is the most awesome technical analysis analyst of all time. Just ask him, he will tell you. But the Randy Dandy deserves a pattern after him, and he has claimed the Randy Dandy cup of handy. And right here is one of the Randy Dandy Cup and Handies. Maybe we need to get Randy Dandy to explain about beauty behind the Cup and Handy. And why it's so special. But the Randy Dandy Cup and Handy kind of exposed in more of a uh, channel to me. <laughs> May this be our partial decline. May we find support at these areas because, gosh darn it, it would suck to come down to negative four cents on big time. <laughs> Put this line where we got a little bit more support and just track that guy. Here on the bigger time frames, trying to figure out big time. This one goes back, let's say October 20. Okay, that's about right. What can we figure out from Big Tom? Well, I'm pulling out all my old bear tricks. All my bear market tricks right here. See what we got. 
It's telling me that maybe, maybe, maybe we might have found an area of support here. I mean, that might actually hold for a big time, and that was at 20 cents, so dang. Let's see, I am playing this over on, um, oh gosh darn it. Big Unix, so I mean it. I don't, I've already, I, I'm not logged in here. Or I would jump over there. I may need to add a little to my bag over there to kind of offset any losses that we've had. Unless I got out of it over here. I may have already got out of it. I can't remember. I've not been very active in that one as of late. Little confluence with a, a possible bottom trend line for this previous pattern. I'm I'm liking the area that it touched down to. Maybe that will hold. Maybe it will. That would be cool. I'm just trying to look at some signs that may. Uh... What I'll be looking for is a retest of this trend line area. So back about 26 cents, and then we got to see. Now we start breaking back up into that. Good sign. We want to see that. Get rejected. Uh, well, there's more pain coming and. Maybe 20 cents, it may be lower. So that's what I would have to say about big time for what I'm saying. All depends on right here. But yeah, 20 cents, nice area. Rex LDN, should I invest now? Is it the right time? Well, we talked about this earlier and it depends. It depends a lot on you, on your risk tolerance, but as a general rule, this is just my opinion. This is not advice. But if you're looking at any altcoins like that are in accumulation areas, those are that's the right time to invest. If you're seeing the ones that are kind of overplayed, uh, well, yeah, it's a little bit more iffy. And, and what I mean by accumulation is that there are a lot of coins that are still in accumulation zones. And so when you zoom out, like on a three-day chart or a five-day chart, this is your accumulation zone all through here. So if I answer your question about this particular asset, I would say, yeah, it's a good time to invest. I would recommend a DCA strategy. You don't have to be the the trader to nail the all the entries and all this to make a buttload of money here uh, for this coin investment dca is an excellent strategy for any of them in any pattern like this a bottoming pattern a double bottom pattern that we're revisiting or having broken out of accumulation zones anything like that is beautiful but you take something like avax this was the accumulation pattern we're far from that we're starting to come back down now she comes back down, touches this 200 moving average over here, about 20. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, that is so on the table. Please don't let it be. If they got really dirty and nasty, they could wreck a lot of people right now, really. And I'm starting to look at my spot margin positions that I'm very well covered on. And I'm seeing, man, I've still got to be cautious on them because seriously, some of those I, I'm in danger if they get really nasty and want to drive this down. Uh, I mean, I'm, I've got to really rush in and, and cover my bases on some of that. I don't foresee it, though. We went over some of those bigger metrics. I think they're just trying to flush us out. Don't ever use think, feel, and believe. I'm about to blow that out of the water. I think you have to use the word think because you're using your logical process and you want to use your logical processes when you're dealing with things that you're trying to take emotion out of. You want to pay attention to those feelings and it's okay to feel. You just want to keep it in place. And believe, well, if you don't believe in the if you don't believe in your strategy and your method and in the team behind it, well, 
yeah, you, you don't have much to stand for. A lot of this is finding out what works for you as far as technical analysis go and the little tools you put in your tool back box. If you don't have faith and believe in those tools, then you're not going to be a very effective user of those tools. So I'm all for think, feel, and believe. Speaking of AVAX, since we're here, man, we wick below this trend line. There's a sign of weakness. And if we keep banging on that trend line, it's going to fall, fail. But right now we're wicking back into it, which is, you know, maybe a saving grace. But just the fact that we busted through it, even just for a little bit, always puts this, now for me, always puts this area back on, on the market, the 200 moving average and maybe in the breakout area. We're right down here at 13, it doesn't mean it's going to do it, but just because we broke that, I've got to, for my safety, I've got to keep that in mind now. On the smaller time frames of six hour, we've not really technically recovered that. We're still below that trend line, meaning that baby, $20 might be coming for eight bags. Wouldn't that suck? It's going to suck for me. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the bear sentiment to drive us down there. That's why I'm really thinking they're trying to fake us out this weekend. But we'll keep our eyes on it. We will definitely keep our eyes on this. Now, if I had to come up here and make an argument, even on the four hour with my moving averages, I got the 800, the 600, the 300, the 200, all lined up beautifully. It's just the 100 and all those other ones that are being the joy kills at the moment. And the bigger guys will straighten them out, man. We'll straighten them out. It's going to take a lot to make Lucy cross over the 800. It's going to take a lot to make the 200 cross over Lucy. It's going to take a lot to make the 300 cross over Lucy. It's going to take a lot to make the 200 cross over the 300. And that's not here yet. No problem, Chris. Sugar says, I get my crypto from John Boy. Hey, yeah. John Boy is pretty cool. Rex Eldian, when do you think the market will rise? I'm going to see what it does Sunday. I I, I think we'll I think we'll see that this was just manipulation, like what happened a few weeks ago. And uh, Mark Yusko had did some interviews after that. I thought he explained it very, very well. If you guys don't know who Mark Yusko, Yusko is, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. He's the um, he's a venture capitalist from Morgan Creek Financial. He is spot on on this market. The way he sees this stuff, the way he connects the dots, he connects dots that I was connecting, and then he connects all these other dots. He just paints the picture so clear. Mark Yusko, um, I think Bitcoin.com does a lot of interviews with him, but yeah, search him on YouTube, man. Anytime you find him talking, listen. He, he will really help you. He, he spells it out for you. He is an awesome dude. So, to get back to that, yeah, I'm looking for Sunday. Just to see. Ford Nerd says, just for now, bye, 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 until July. Maybe. I think we got to go back to total three. Bitcoin, I see. I don't. I, I don't see the market tanking out of Bitcoin. I just don't. Not normally. Not unless it's coerced or forced or manipulated. Um, all coins though. All coins are getting crazy. We're getting like five thousand coins a day, or maybe more. And. Um, I, I put my tinfoil hat on when it comes to all coins. Let me take a minute just to just everybody loves you and everybody wants you to excuse me. Come on a little closer, get closer to becoming you. Tiny mountain queen who are show us who you really are. Shiny bright city of stars, we run the show. This is all ours. Standing taller than the trees, they went down. We get this far. Shining bright city. Can't take away 
If I were an evil institutional corporation just dying to get my fingers into some of the hottest assets that were out there that actually did have some value, such as Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, maybe some other projects, maybe some projects that I'm developing on this, my own on the side here, or that some other people are developing on their side. If I wanted to get my fingers into things, how could I distract the masses away from the assets that I'm really trying to go in and dig my fingers in and get a nice big fat juicy bag how can i distract the masses from these really valuable projects that can make me a shit ton of money here in this next year and a half what could i possibly do to get all those idiots away from these projects and barking them up because i didn't get in early enough because of all the regulation. Now I've got some leeway. I've got some tendrils that I can put in there and kind of move things around a little bit easier. Why could I, could I? Why I could promote all the worthless shit coins. What could do that? Mean coins. Yeah, maybe. And worthless projects. We don't so much want rug pulls. We just we like the ones that just kind of fade away to nothing with all the hype, right? That's not illegal. They tried. It just didn't happen. Yes. And then I can collect all the goodies. All the juicy bags at a cheap price and scare the market. Yes. Let's just liquidate everyone and let's get up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Not dissing on the meme thing. People have been making money. Look at Haven. He's been killing it. A lot of people have been killing it. It is a, a sector. Um, I'm just saying approach it with caution as always. There are projects that will do things and be worth something and gain a lot of value Bitcoin being one of them and then there are others that uh, they just don't and in every bear market they all fall or usually around 90 to 99 percent of their value is lost from their all-time highs so as I'm sitting here looking at um, total three representing our altcoins and just seeing uh, is getting annihilated here with a important trend line we lost it that's gone looking for something that will give us some saving grace here give us some support and right there we are we've got it if it will hold and this bottom and that one connecting those dots if it doesn't I'm scared. <laughs> I'll put it out there for that. I'm scared if we break this trend line. That will make Road Dog have to seriously start looking at this freaking market a little bit different. And and I'm paying attention to it all because of this top member, the 3.618 and also these 618 Fibonacci retracement areas. Now the 618 doesn't scare me that much. The 3618 is making me think, yeah, that's making me think, yeah, they're probably going to do something a little drastic here. And I think we, I hope. I hope that we've seen the brunt that, that we've seen the brunt of it today. I hope that we have. It may not be the last one. They made this next week get us all excited, back with altcoins again, and then come back and do it again next week or two weeks from now. And I say that because now we got a trend line for them that can spell that out. And you know, same rules of the game. Follow that and see if we got some confluence and just kind of check it out. But I think the powers that be, you no, know, we we just got institutions coming on board here, finding a way and working through, manipulating even the regulators to, you know, bend to their way. They do have that much power, and now we get China. It's going to be interesting. 
China has a big effect on this market. A lot of my late night trading habit comes from trading against Asia back in the past cycles because nighttime can get pretty interesting. You think of daytime around 10 and 11 o'clock when the U.S. opens and, you know, most of the live streams are on. You know, you usually see pumps and short squeezes then. Wait till China gets in and around this time around 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock in, in the morning. It's pretty fun. It's a hard for them to do right now. They're having to go from mainland China through ways of Hong Kong, but that's how they're setting it up. And um, it's coming. It's coming. China will be on board. They're not going to miss out on crypto. They're not. They're not. But um, they don't play chess. They play Go. It's like chess on steroids, I think. It's a very strategic game, too, just with some different rules. So if you're playing chess and they're playing Go... <laughs> You know, they got a strategy. Trust me. So I'm missing out on a lot of the chat here. I am think I'm catching most of the coins. Just trying to make sure. Meme coins are the Hunger Games right now. Yeah. Board nerd says there's something like five Solana meme coins um, released every minute. Ninety percent you got to buy and sell in the same hour, or the floor falls. In. And, and I mean, so it's it's gambling. So entice, distract the the masses with gambling and fun, and you bury your talons in. You get your positions in order. Why you got the distraction going on? Smoking mirrors, stage magician, whatever. That's just how I'm kind of looking at the market right now. That's how I do it. Don't have to agree. It's just, um, just what my intuition just keeps throwing on my radar every time I'm turning it around. Selinda says, big hedge funds are shorting BTC into the happening. They are dumping it to save themselves or w are they dumping it to save themselves or will the market makers squeeze the heck out of them? Um, I don't necessarily think the market makers are going to play against them. <laughs> I think the market makers and the hedge funds are, are more playing against retail. Quite honest. I mean, to just frame that question. Um, but yeah, good point. Again, I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens Sunday coming into Monday. I think that's going to be very interesting. Now, I do need to check and, and check the days because I think China is a day ahead of us here in the U.S., so will there Monday be Sunday? Should we look to Saturday? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious to see what happens. I Again, looking at Bitcoin, just looking at the charts. I mean, pullback area has yes, to be expected. Might we see 60,000, maybe upper 50s? It's not off the radar. I'm just not... I just see nothing that's going to validate it just yet. I'm keeping my eyes open for that. The one thing that I would do to, to start looking more for that for hour, I want to see some of these other moving averages cost bullishly over the 200. If I start seeing that, well, then I'm definitely going to start looking at these lower targets around 60,000, 61,000. If I don't see that, then I'm, I think we just got played. And so the four hour would be the first place I look for that. And then again, here on the daily, seeing what cross is on the daily. Right now, we haven't got a bearish cross of the nine over the 21. Price has just lost those areas. That's all. So they follow price. So there will be a little bit of a dip, but there's no cross. I mean, we kind of looked at it over here, too. What happened when we went back up so we can regain some ground? So I'm not seeing it as terrible yet. It could be a first signs of maybe something. Maybe, maybe. I think we got those signs earlier. We um, did kind of. Okay, here's our here's the the big area that I'm looking for. That I can is this. I think it's on the Christmas tree candles too, right? No, that's not what I was looking for. What the hell was this line? 
Oh, from here, the top's over here. This is the previous top area? Okay. A daily candle. Top, I think I raced it on here. We lost that guy. We were looking to hold that guy, right? 67.5-ish area. That was the area that we really needed to hang on to. And, and now we kind of lost it and trying. Looks like we're trying on the Christmas tree candles to get it back. On my other candles, they kind of they kind of spell out the bearishness of the situation. All right, so the white line, <laughs> we lost it, but we didn't come back below this other one. This other one was the first top that we had, so we're kind of a little rangy from our first top and our second top. We're just kind of ranging in there. So kind of what I'm saying is that, you know, losing this area 65.3 would definitely be another big major sign that some bigger drops would come in. Our first warning is losing this first top here. We may regain it. 200 moving average, 100 moving average kind of on this particular time train says that, uh, yeah, we probably can. And so that's again why I'm looking for what happens this weekend. Um, mostly Saturday and Sunday. I'm not as nervous about this, but I am just throwing the signs out there to watch out for. 65.3, start losing that. <laughs> Make a lower low than over here. Those are the signs that we need to be aware of. The things that we got going for us though you know we made a higher we didn't make a higher low in this I mean we made a low we made a higher low still so far it's a higher low so our technically we're not bearish just yet not until we make a lower low than this one and that again would knock out this level that I'm looking for us holding and that would bring us here and I would you know have to start entertaining some lower areas thinking that well now we're going to have to start looking more at this channel but i'm not seeing it yet so i'm not just going to worry about things until it's time to worry about them i guess but just be cautious and protect yourself and make a plan plan a plan b but if it, we do lose bitcoin man all coins will hurt and then again, that's where we're getting back to the total three thing. I'm hoping that we're seeing this rejection thing play out now. I'm hoping we're getting the brunt of it now and that then that we can start working on the recovery. But do remember what I just said a minute ago. That may not be the last time, you know, two weeks from now, we might be coming back and seeing the same situation happen again. So taking profit on your altcoins, not a bad idea when you get the chance. And I will keep preaching that. Justin says Cass was pumping. Well, if you're watching the smaller, smaller time frames, you can probably say that. It might. Could be a nice little bottom pattern. It could be, or it could be setting up for a bare flag. You just got to see. And by my definitions, I wouldn't be calling that a pumping unless you're shorting. But, uh, She at least found a place to where she made a low and then made a higher low. So that's the first signs we need for a turnaround right there. Make a higher high, recover this area, looking better. I've definitely been soaking up some more Caspa in my, my uh, spot train trade because the lower I buy it, the lower my, my liquidation point comes. So it behooves me to make the bigger buys here. So it behooves me to take profit up here at these juicy areas. I have the money to do it. I wanted to say it behooves all day, so that gave me a chance. So I said it three times. Rust main debt is a big deal. That is true. That Rust main debt will be a big deal, and so will the um, smart contracts. So, yeah, Caspa, definitely keep it on radar. D distracted Dudes is pumping on base. I hadn't even heard of that one. How's space doing? There's a lot of distracted coins over here. Wow, what the hell? Distracted boyfriend, distracted lion, distracted Tom. 
buff distracted boyfriend this is just getting this is just getting it's not the first time that we've seen the, i mean there's always meme coins coming out but back before there were you know erc 20s and, and and all this stuff they would just fork bitcoin or fork some other project and just throw it you know that was our equivalent of mean coins back in the day there would be new coins popping out claiming to be the biggest bettest revolutionary thing and it's just a copy of another coin and it's just crazy seeing the same thing here with mean coins again we saw it last cycle too it happens every time it always ends the same way though people get <laughs> get wrecked But there's money to be made in the meantime. So form of gambling is just how I look at a lot of that. I can't find it. I'm trying to look for it. Distracted. Distracted dudes. Distracted dudes. Right there we go. Next score 55, contract is verified, no honeypot. Buy tax, sales tax are unknown on this little guy. Lots of people sell in. Let's see what we got here. It's the 12 hour. What? That's a big old pump and dump. Maybe I don't have the right one. It's him on the five minute chart. Hmm. Might have got the wrong one. Ticker is dude. Dude. There we go. That looks healthier than the other one we just looked at. Oh, nice. Support resistance flip area there. Cool. I like that. I like that reverse scallop. Those are sexy to me. I will spell it out slowly. All the dirty things that you've done wrong. Let's see what we can figure out with this little guy. I'm not in it, wouldn't know how to find it, but I likes to chart when I can chart. Let's use a little fib magic, shall we? Nailed it! Ladies and gentlemen, what I just did there right in front of your very eyes that I think is very worthwhile to share with you, fellas, if you're not familiar with this little technique. It's called the Fibonacci projection, sometimes called the Fibonacci extensions, although it really should be called the Fibonacci projection, especially according to Callan Broden. When you take a swing low to the swing high and you come back to your next little swing low here with this three point little tools located right over here called trend based fib extension again i would like to call it a projection but we're just being anal at this point swing low swing high swing back low again gives you those little points that you need and you take your eyes to the extensions over here paying very careful attention to the 1618 you can see that that is, gives you a projection of 
a possible high that you will get out of this move, which we have nailed right over here. Now you know. Or the, the more you know. Do, do, do. The public service announcement for today. Baby, boogie. Now I'm looking for that 2618 and that 3618 little sweet spot. Let's see if we can hit those up as a target there. 3618, remember? She does come into play. We took a different measurement way to get to that way, but we're doing it from this guy. But, uh, cool, man. If, um, this little guy dude finds support it may have done it right here it may come back and retest this area point zero 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 four six five it may do it again but odds are good that it's at least gonna you know try to come up here to point zero 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 eight one area and that could be a nice 73 percent gain Coming from the bottom top of this channel to, let's say, this 0 0.0009, that's 89. Up here at this nice little target I got, 0 0.0012. May hit, may not. It's in the math for it, though. It's within the Fibonacci range in there. It's in the program. Could be 157% gains, so nice. So if there is money in the mean coins, you just got to be very, very careful. Just be very careful. Jester Crypto says, just send my soul address to banter bubbles for the gummy airdrop. Good luck, everyone. I haven't tried it on the banter bubbles. I, it sounds like a cool airdrop. I like the, that they're, you know, nobody's keeping it. They're going to make it a fair one. And yeah, okay. That's the way they need to do it. And it helps their channel too. Doing a fair lot on something. I'm cool with that. And then again, if you really, really want to earn the airdrop points, you go and participate with all their smart move. Board Nerd says I was going to try out margin trading for the first time this weekend. Guess I'll wait till next weekend. Well, Board Nerd, I'm going to tell you something. One of the best times to start margin trading, if we're talking about spot margin, not talking about perpetual futures, but you're talking about the smart margin, like what I got over on Sep uh, Se and CoinX, you want to do it when the market is dumped. That's when you want to move your your either your coins that you're you're going to borrow against, or your dollars that you're going to use for your collateral. You move that in over there and then you start slowly build, you know, building your bag. But you do it when the market's down. You don't do it when it's up or even when it's in the best time would be during the drop on this weekend, honestly. So that's why I didn't have a test state to go back over there and, you know, to kind of manage my trades and stuff and make sure that I'm, I'm set up because, ah, shoot, I took advantage of this. Let's drop over there. Yes. And um, I will probably do a stream. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping tomorrow, Saturday, maybe tomorrow or tomorrow evening, I can do a, a, a members only stream and maybe actually may make it members only. And then I'll, you know, the members only stream, I feel a little bit more comfortable sharing my portfolio over there on uh, CoinX. And it is a, it's not my biggest one, but it's bigger than what I've normally showed, shared on the channel. And at some point, you just, it's nobody needs, most people don't need to know. Just the people getting the benefit from me explaining things need to, to know what I'm, I'm doing. So I'm, I might do that and then I can kind of break it down what I'm doing over there and explain that strategy. But right now, it's like when the market drops, this is a good time to start doing those. You, you're, you're, you're doing what the whale's doing. You're, you're getting in on the bottoms. Guys, it is now 1244. I went way too long on this string, but I appreciate you for hanging out. I think we covered some nice interesting topics tonight and going over the market as best we can for what's happening again i'm waiting for s saturday evening and s sunday mostly sunday evening to see what's going on they'll try to trip us up monday and tuesday but it'll probably be an interesting week not probably not the greatest week coming but i, I 
right now I'm not seeing much danger. If I do start seeing danger, I'll definitely voice that opinion. But right now I think that they're just trying to mess with our little hearts and minds and rob us blind over the weekend. Don't let them do it. They tried this a couple weeks ago and everything turned out just fine. All right, guys, I will see you again tomorrow night. Trade carefully. Try not to get liquidated. Try not to FOMO in. Try to, you know, dial it back a little bit. But uh, all those good projects that you missed out on, here's a chance to nibble anyway. See you guys tomorrow night. Thanks for hanging out with me. God bless you. Oh, the wrong one. support well there are a few things that you can do find that like button give it just a, a playful little smack and subscribe and join the channel and it's just down into your left and you tap with your eyes Look over to the side. Where well, you can join and subscribe. This crypto rival, the ring that drives you out. Let's hit the like button now. Let's hit the like button now. Come on, come here, boy. Come on. Good night, John, boy.